The Final Fantasy Pixel remasters look great. Now if they just go ahead and release it on console, oh my god, what the hell is that font? The last time I saw something that tall and skinny, it was arguing with Marge and Boo. There hasn't been anything this compressed since the Nocturne HD remaster soundtrack. The hopes and dreams of Lloyd and Dante fans during that last Smash reveal were less squashed than this. The last time something was this squished, it was blamed for the video game crash of 1983. This is the font equivalent of that guy in that one episode of The Simpsons who's too tall for his own car. Do you find something comical about my appearance? Okay, but on a more serious note, the Final Fantasy Pixel remasters do look good, but there just seems to be one too many caveats at the moment. Faithful pixel art remasters of the first six Final Fantasy games is a big yes from me. Rearranged high quality soundtracks overseen by Uematsu himself, gameplay improvements and new features, all this sounds great. But that font really is absolutely terrible and actually looks like it will be hard to read at times. They are separate purchases rather than a complete pack and they're only coming to mobile and Steam, no console release at all. And they've added the little disclaimer that these are based on the original, original versions of the game and may not include content and features that appeared in later versions of these games like the Game Boy Advance and PSP versions. It just seems so… Uh, half here, half there. The first three will be launching on July 28th on PC via Steam and mobile only, as previously mentioned. There is a bundle you can pre-order on Steam for all six titles, but 4, 5 and 6 will be released at a later date. Now moving on to some Tales of Arise news, the director has finally been revealed for this latest entry in the Tales series. In a new developer message posted to the Bandai Namco YouTube channel, producer Tomizawa introduces the Tales of Arise director, Hirokazu Kagawa, who then talks a bit about the battle system, and this is a topic he is well versed in. Tales of Arise is the first time Kagawa has stepped into the director role, but prior to this he was the lead battle programmer for Tales of Graces, Zestiria and Berseria, the assistant battle programmer for Destiny and Exilia, and he's been working on the Tales series in various roles for over 10 years. So he obviously knows a thing or two when it comes to Tales, but this looks to be the first time he leads in a more creative role. He's been a senior member of the team for some time, but as lead battle programmer it wasn't his job to come up with the battle system or anything else, it was his job to make it all work behind the scenes and execute the creative vision of the various directors and designers. Kagawa joins the very short list of confirmed staff positions for Tales of Arise alongside producer Yusuke Tomizawa, composer Motoi Sakuraba and art director Minoru Iwamoto, who also makes an appearance in the developer message to talk about facial expressions, idle animations and characterization. Tales of Arise is due to launch on September 10th for PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series and PC via Steam, but it might not be the only Tales project on the horizon. We are moving into rumour territory here, but I find this to be reasonably credible and very possible for a couple of reasons. So what am I talking about? Well, allegedly there is a Tales of Destiny HD on the way for PC, PlayStation, Xbox and Nintendo Switch. This would likely take the form of a Definitive Edition, much like Vesperia Definitive Edition, and would again be a much bigger value prospect for those of us in the West because it is said to be based on the PS2 Director's Cut version which was never released outside of Japan. So while in Japan this will most likely be seen as something of a remaster, over here it will be almost like an entirely new experience. There are a ton of differences and additions between the PS2 Director's Cut and the PS1 version of Tales of Destiny that got a North American release. I find this very possible because it lines up with some murmurs I heard a few years ago, namely that there was a second Tales project in the works that was coming to the Nintendo Switch. Tales of Arise notably is not getting a Switch release. This also makes sense because what is generally referred to as the Tails team is actually the Tails teams. There are multiple teams that work on Tails and there are usually two Tails projects being worked on at any given time. More definitive editions for fan favourite entries seems like a no brainer to me, and games like Vesperia and Destiny are probably the most economical since part of the localization work has already been done. Even though there is still a significant amount of work involved, they aren't starting from square one. What do you think? Is this likely? Is this something you even want to see? More Tales is always good in my book, and something else that would be good is the revival of an extremely underrated JRPG series. Maybe something like uh, Barton Kaitos?
So this is probably nothing, but it is noteworthy for one reason. Over the past few months, Bandai Namco has registered trademarks for both Barton Kaitos and Barton Kaitos Origins, as well as the original Barton Kaitos subtitle of Eternal Wings and the Lost Ocean, in both Japan and Europe. Now, companies renew trademarks all the time. It's standard procedure and that is all this might be, but there is a reason it could be something more than a standard renewal. They specifically registered both Barton Kaitos, Eternal Wings and the Lost Ocean, and Barton Kaitos Origins in Europe, even though Barton Kaitos Origins was never released in Europe, and they had never filed for the Origins trademark in the region prior to this year. Also, the previous trademark in Europe, which was simply for Barton Kaitos, expired over nine years ago, and neither of these new filings is a renewal of that now expired trademark. Please don't get your hopes up though, because this is by no means hard evidence that they are definitely planning a port or a remaster or anything like that. It could be something preemptive, just in case they ever do greenlight such a project. It could be new management or a new legal team that thought it was prudent to ensure all their trademarks are up to date in all regions. It could be something to do with a mobile game or merchandise for all we know. So again, don't get your hopes up. I'd certainly like to get my hopes up because Barton Kaito's Eternal Wings and the Lost Ocean is genuinely in my top 10 favorite games. I think it's a hugely underrated JRPG. Yasuyuki Hone, who currently heads Monolith Soft's Kyoto studio, was the director of the Barton Kaito series, and he did express interest in returning to the series back in 2018 to complete what was originally planned as a trilogy. Bandai Namco do own the IP rights to the series though, and they still have tons of pre-production material related to Barton Kaito's 3 sealed away somewhere in their archives, according to Yasuyuki Hone. He basically said if you want to see Barton Kaito's again, you have to make your pleas to Bandai Namco, and a lot of us did just that. It is something I'd love to see, but I don't think it's all that likely if I'm being honest. Doesn't mean we can't hope and dream though, right? So if you want to see Barton Kaito's remasters happen, click that like button now. It's definitely for the remaster thing and not for YouTube algorithm reasons. Pinky promise. There's a big red button down there as well that says subscribe on it. I'm not quite sure what that's all about, but you should probably click that too just to be safe. And other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon. The last time I saw something that tall and skinny, he was relegated to an assist trophy in Super Smash Bros. The last time I saw something that tall and skinny, it threw a magical murder book down to earth for a bit of fun. The last time I saw something that tall and skinny, it was tricking people who don't watch mecha anime into watching a mecha anime. Oberon Martel's head was less squashed than this.